welcome back to my channel. I am a former elementary teacher that uprooted from Texas to South Florida to lead social media and influencer marketing for two ed tech brands, one based here in South Florida and the other one in Brooklyn, New York. I am super passionate about what I do, but I'm a teacher first. So that's why this channel will have a collection of my life in ed tech, as well as ed tech tips for teachers. The teacher community means everything to me and so much more, so share your story in the comments and let's get to know one another. Before I dive into today's video, I have to tell you that if you like the content you've seen so far and what you're about to hear, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click that bell so you can be notified of all my future uploads. In today's video, I'm sharing four key ways that Nearpod can be used for a virtual classroom, in a distance learning, or even a hybrid teaching approach. Basically, whenever your district makes a stinking decision, Nearpod's got you, boo, and so do I, because, duh. Before I dive into the four key reasons, why should you even use Nearpod? So Nearpod's an interactive way to bring your lessons to life. Students can interact with your lesson in a variety of ways. Polls, multiple choice, open-ended questions, virtual reality, gamification. Now, I'm not gonna dive too deep into that today, but if that's something that you want, leave me a comment so then I know that's what you're feeling, thinking I can cook for you, boo. <laughs> also, you're going to get real-time feedback in your lesson, so you're gonna get to see from every single student what their responses are, and you're gonna get post-session reports. So then you can see individual student completion and what they posted. I know, I know, I know, amazing. Now, there are two ways to launch a lesson. There's live lesson mode where the teacher controls the flow of the lesson and students interact with the content based on what the teacher decides in that moment. There's also student pace, which is key for virtual learning, distance learning, also even centers. Teachers give students a code. Students join with that code on their own time, whenever it's convenient for them, their parents, and then the student controls the flow of the lesson. You're gonna get reports back in both of these. Now, you heard it here, maybe first. There's also a third mode coming. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I know a secret and I can't tell you yet, but I'll share with y'all soon. I really wanna to share today, but it's just not the day for you. So another time, I'm gonna keep it in here. Okay, finally, finally, let's dig into the four key ways Nearpod is gonna work in a virtual classroom, distance learning, hybrid approach, basically whichever way the wind blows. Now let's get down to business. You know, just as much as I do, if not more, how important it is to stay connected with your students and how much harder that can be when in a virtual environment. With Nearpod, there are some key features within the platform that you're going to be able to connect with those students virtually and try to simulate as much of an in-classroom feel as possible, and I'm gonna share ways that you're gonna be able to do that. A teacher favorite feature is Nearpod's collaborative board, which you can use to encourage community discussions. This is basically a digital parking lot where students can post their ideas via text, images, GIFs, and it's gonna increase that engagement because you're gonna hear from every single student and not just your typical hand raisers, so you can then create those connections with all students in your classroom. With Nearpod's Collaborate feature, you can actually hide student names. So let's say you're asking a pretty sensitive question, like you're doing an SEL check-in or an exit ticket where you want students to maybe be vulnerable and share how they're feeling in this new type of environment, but you don't want to single students out. You can, with the click of a button, click a name, it's going to hide student names, and now there's a lower barrier of entry for students to respond. There's also an option where you can enable post approval before it goes onto the board. So as you're setting expectations and they haven't quite mastered that yet, you can review those before they get posted. Or let's say you want them to all pop on at the same time because you want students to reflect before they see the answer. It's a very flexible feature, which is why it's a teacher favorite. Another way to create connections virtually, physically, hybrid model approach is to use one of Nearpod's over 300,000 virtual reality experiences that you can add into your own lessons or add into one of our 
8,000 pre-existing lessons that are editable to meet the needs of any teacher. You can now create shared experiences amongst your classroom while y'all are spread out all over. This is also gonna create empathy building. It's gonna help provide schema in some of your lessons. I know when I taught at a rural farm school, half my students had never been to the beach. So if I'm reading a story that the setting takes place at the beach, that's unfair to those students that don't have that schema to even pull from. So now they're struggling with that. How can I even expect them to decipher the academic language when there's already a disadvantage? Now we can level the playing field and create equal access to opportunities and experiences. There are so many ways that you can use virtual reality in your classroom and still align to the standards. It does not have to just be fluffy and whatever. It, when I hear that, I'm like, y'all, yeah, let me tell you, my friend, I actually loved using it in math. So if I was teaching multiplication, I took them to a candy shop or a grocery store and they were looking to spot different arrays. If I was teaching the biomes for science, I was taking them to the different biomes, then having class discussions about what type of animals would you see, and now discuss the flow of energy from one animal to the other. You can also build connections by gamifying your learning, whether you're doing a spiral review, bell ringer, exit tickets, you can use Nearpod it's time to climb, which is of such a fun gamification feature. Students are responding to these questions, rushing up the mountain. It's such a fun way to make everyone feel like they're in the same room. Nearpod also has a matching pairs feature, which sounds exactly like what it is. You can match picture to picture, text to picture, text to text, and create a low risk self-checking assessment that students can then see their responses in real time, self-assess their own understanding, and it's a way to shake up the learning as opposed to a call and response type of situation. Did you know that Nearpod has a direct Flipgrid integration directly within Nearpod? Oh yeah, it's time for you to ignite conversations, create video conferencing within your students in real time where you can then hear and see from your students, show your personality by embedding it within Nearpod. And why is this so powerful? Because now you're eliminating multi-tab teaching, you're keeping everything in one hub and now your students and your parents you're welcome are not having to go to 800 different platforms and trying to sign on to complete one assignment you can add everything within your nearpod experience even through a web link so then they sign on to nearpod and everything they need it's done it is such an amazing way oh and also are you using Canvas, Schoology, Blackboard, Google Classroom, or any of those fun little LMSs? Guess what? We integrate with those. So get your hiney up and start looking. <laughs> Nearpod also integrates with many video conferencing tools that's gonna to be able to help as you're trying to navigate this new virtual learning, distance learning, hybrid model approach. Nearpod integrates with Big Blue Button, Zoom, Google Hangouts, Microsoft Teams, as well as GoToWebinar. I'm gonna link all of those examples in the description below. That way I don't have to dive into that in this video, but if you're curious, it's all gonna be down below. Okay, y'all, that was literally just the first way that Nearpod can support for your virtual classroom distance learning or hybrid model approach. Create connections with your students virtually. All of those features are going to help do just that. Now, the second way that Nearpod's gonna support your distance learning, virtual learning, hybrid model approach is that you can adapt your core curriculum into Nearpod. You can drag and drop your PowerPoint files, your Google Slides files, and you can make them more interactive by adding all of those interactivities that I shared earlier and more that I didn't even list. So you're gonna upload what you have, make it more interactive, and you're gonna be able to engage your students in such a quick and easy way. If you use Google Classroom or you like to create in Google Slides, there's actually a Nearpod Google Slides Chrome extension that you can add, and then you can just create all of your interactivities with Nearpod within the platform, press a button, and it's gonna shoot it off into Nearpod. It is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna link that Google Chrome extension below. Basically, all the Nearpod goodies are gonna be in the description box, so check it out, my friends. The third way that Nearpod will be able to help 
any type of approach that your district decides is that you can embed student voice and choice within your Nearpod lesson. Not only with the Flipgrid integration that I shared earlier, hearing from every child and not just your Pop-Tarts that are constantly answering, but you can add student choice such as student choice boards. Embed student choice boards either directly in your Nearpod lessons or if you have those fun student choice board templates, add student paste codes and say a tic-tac-toe board and then students are completing the different Nearpod lessons based on the ones that they want to do that aligns with that student choice board. The fourth way that Nearpod's going to support whatever teaching style your district decides is that you're going to do so by applying an empathy lens when you use Nearpod. Now, how is that? If you're using student choice, you're now deciding what is optional and what is non-negotiable because you just don't want to hand a packet of work to your students, overwhelm your parents in this already overwhelming situation, and now they don't know what they really have to get done and what's optional. Of course, we'd like to say that everything needs to get done, but we really need to set clear boundaries for not only our students, but our parents as well. You can also ask yourselves, are my students able to complete these type of assignments on their own without support? You're not going to be able to Zoom with them in every type of experience. So being able to launch those student pace codes so the students can complete the work on their own is really going to help not only the students but the parents as well who are juggling so many different things. Then we also think, how can parents stay informed on my child's progress? I'm sure you've got that strapped down. Remember, you're also going to get post-session reports, individual student responses that you can quickly download and send to parents whenever you need so then you're not overwhelmed trying to quickly grade things, but you can just shoot them those reports and let them know how they're doing. A huge empathetic lens that I shared earlier is that you're going to be able to put everything within your lesson in one hub. You're going to eliminate that multi-tab teaching so those students are not jumping around to so many different things, then coming to you because they forgot their password. You don't need a password for Nearpod because it's not individual student accounts. They just log in with their name and they're able to get started. You can chunk that long lesson into smaller Nearpods if you want, whatever's going to make it more digestible for your students. Y'all, that was a lot. I can't even believe it was only four. Creating virtual connections with your students, adapting your pre-created resources into Nearpod, providing student choice and voice, and applying an empathetic lens. I didn't want to get too, too technical in this video, so I hope this was a semi-decent balance of telling you what it can do and also showing you a little bit of the platform. Keep in mind, if there's anything that you want me to dive into deeper, let me know in the comments so I know what to create. I can definitely get more into the nuts and bolts, but this is just an overview of how Nearpod is going to be able to support you. Distance learning, virtual learning, hybrid learning, I'm sure you're sick of me saying that already. So I believe in you. I believe in your resilience. I believe in your creativity to do whatever you need to do to support your students because that is number one priority. Whether you use Nearpod or not, I really don't care. I just care that you take care of you and that you're taking care of your students. So reach out to me if there's any way I can support you. I love being a part of this community and thanks for watching.